Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a UXP plugin with a custom sort of UI here. We're going to be creating a UI with five buttons and each of these buttons is going to have a functionality. This is inspired by a comment from my full UXP Premiere uh, tutorial that I just released where Voodoo Motion 5855 asked, is it possible to make a condensed panel with custom image buttons similar to a tool palette? Now, while in my last video, which you can check out right here, I didn't go too much into depth on how to make the interfaces. Uh, today, we're going to be doing that basically and creating a custom UI. This UI is going to have five simple buttons, an import button where we import some files, add a sequence, uh, move a clip backwards or forwards five seconds, and an add effects button. So that's the introduction. Let's go ahead and dive into this. So typically when you're creating a UXP plugin, they recommend using the Spectrum uh, Design Library. I believe I have a previous tutorial as well, back when I made Photoshop UXP tutorials, and back then Spectrum was still pretty early, but now it's more developed. They recommend using Spectrum Elements. And if you're not familiar, Spectrum is basically a library of UI elements which match the style of Adobe. So like the buttons will appear in a similar style to these buttons here. Um, the default uh, UI as well uses a spectrum button. So these here are spectrum buttons and in the HTML, these are usually defined by like SP button. There's SP body and all that just means spectrum. But not all the time are you going to want to use spectrum. Sometimes you want to just use your own custom images or your own customly designed UI. So because of that, we're gonna go ahead and create this UI now. Uh, it's gonna be really simple to create the UI, but today's goal is to show you how you can program custom UI stuff to make it look like you're using a tool panel, as well as how to link uh, functionality to each of these buttons. So the first thing we'll need to do is go ahead and create the UI. Let's say we have an empty interface here inside of our HTML body. We're simply going to create an image tag for each of our elements. And I have an assets folder with a button I created for each of these. So let's go ahead and implement these. We're going to have a uh, assets add effect. I guess we can, we can choose the order. We'll start with the imports.png. We're going to set the ID to something that we can reference later because to create the button click, we're going to need an identifier for this button. So we'll just say import for now and we'll close that out. So here is the plugin. Once we saved it and loaded it, you can see we have a big uh, button. What we're going to want to do is go into our CSS and grab our import ID. We're going to style this. Let's go ahead and say instead of like 100 by 100, let's make this, I don't know, 40 by 40. We'll also set up the positioning just so it displays correctly. Display inline block and position relative. And then also let's go ahead and add a border radius of like 10 pixels. So right now we don't have a background color, but when we hover over our imports, we'll set the cursor to be a pointer and let's set the background color to be like grayish color. So now we'll go ahead and reload this. And now you can see when we hover over our element, we have a nice background to let us know we're sort of highlighting it and ready to click it. That's also a little bit small. Let's make it 60. That looks better. Now let's go ahead and program our four other buttons. So we'll just copy and paste this. So we have five instances. Next we'll do the create sequence.png, then the move back.png, then the move forward.png. And lastly, the add effect.png. And then again, we're gonna need an ID for each of these. So if we wanna keep it simple, we can just say import sequence back forward and effect. And now, as you know, if we reload this, we're gonna have these giant other buttons. Um, so let's go ahead and style these as well. I'm just gonna copy and paste this code enough times so that we can say effect uh, forward. We're just replacing it with these other uh, things. We could also create a class, obviously, but I may want more granular control over these later. Uh, import and sequence. So now go ahead and refresh it. 
Now we have our five buttons, which all highlight with a nice border radius uh, when we hover over them. So this is kind of the basics of creating the simple UI. You could go on and create a whole bunch of other uh, sections of this UI. Maybe this is just the sort of creation tab in your uh, plugin. Maybe you want another tab that does other functionalities. This is just the basis for getting started if you want to create your own custom UI. Of course, the rest of it is sort of up to you on how you design it. All right, so now we need to add the functionality to each of our buttons. I have some predefined functions based on our previous tutorial. For example, we imported some files in our last tutorial, we created a new sequence, and we moved a clip from our last file. So I just brought in those functions. We'll go over them in a sec. But first, we need to add an event listener or a click listener to each of these buttons. So we'll say document dot query selector. This is um, jQuery. We'll say hashtag, then the name of our ID. Because our CSS selector here is hashtag import, that is what we'll put for our first button, hashtag import. And we'll say dot add event listener. Let's say click. And then we can do like an arrow function and our code. Let's just go ahead and say, you clicked on me. And there are actually several ways we can do this. I'm just trying this as an experiment. So I'm going to turn on debugging and reload. You can see we're already getting an error on our event listener here. So in this case, I don't think it wants us to use, well, it recognizes the, the click, but it's saying null. So the traditional method is to, instead of doing an anonymous arrow function, to use just the function name. So let's say import file. So this import file function just grabs the project. It gets the insertion bin, which in this case would be the root. And then it runs project.import files, and I have two files it's going to import. So let's see if this actually works. Go ahead and reload. Clear our console here. We hit the import button. You can see our two files are now imported. It's interesting that the uh, arrow function doesn't work. I'm not sure why. If you know, leave a comment down below. So we have one for our import. We need four more. Remember, we have the sequence. We have the back. We have the forward. And we have the effect. And we already have functions set up for all of these. So we set up our import file function. For the sequence button, we want to create a new sequence. For the back button, we want to move back. For the forward button, we want to move forward. And for the add effect, we want to add effect. So let's go ahead and go over the uh, functionality here, which we already did before, but I'm just going to quickly uh, brush over it. We have sequence. Where we create a sequence, we're going to get the active project. We need the project to create a new sequence within it. And then we're going to create a new sequence called test sequence. For the move forward and move back, it's a bit more code, but essentially we're going all the way down the hierarchy to grab an existing sequence. So whatever sequence we have selected, we have a clip within it. We're going to grab that clip here called track item. And then we're going to grab the current time of that clip by saying track item .get endpoint. And then we're going to create a move uh, action. And this move action is going to be our clip time dot seconds minus five. Then we execute the action as mentioned in our previous tutorial. Again, check that out if you're not familiar. Um, and the same thing with the forward, it's the exact same code, except instead of saying clip time dot seconds minus five seconds to move it backwards five seconds, we're gonna say clip time dot seconds plus five. And lastly, because if you might be following this tutorial yourself, I wanted to encourage you to fill in this add effect. How can you add an effect by looking at the, the guide and figuring that out? Uh, you can look up things like video component chain. There's audio component chain. And when we look at video clip track item, we have access to get the component chain. So based on that, go ahead and challenge yourself and see if you can figure out how to add an effect. Oh yeah, one more tip in the video filter factory. Uh, this is where you can cr create a component, aka an effect. And similar to the old scripting days, we're going to use a match name, which has something like this. So that's my challenge to you. That's your homework to see if you can figure that out. Let's go ahead and test what we have so far. We'll reload our plugin. Getting a strange GDI status invalid parameter. Not sure what that is. Um, so let's go ahead and test it out. 
First, let's go ahead and create a new sequence. Boom, test sequence created. Let's go back to our existing sequence where we want to move a clip forward five seconds, just like that. Every time we click on it, it goes forward. And we can also do the opposite and go back five seconds. So let's review really quick. The first thing you need to do to create a sort of custom UI is to first have the images ready. You'll need to program them into your HTML. You don't have to use strictly images. You can use SVGs, you can use videos, you can use the spectrum as well. Use everything that you know in terms of UI creation to create a nice looking interface. Then of course you want to style your elements. This means um, that you can apply things when you hover over them, adjust the sizing so everything looks right. Uh, by default, I actually tried something interesting, it doesn't work. If I set the opacity of the import button to 0.2, let me go ahead and refresh it, you can see it doesn't apply. There are some properties that don't seem to get affected. So if you want to do like a low opacity and then you hover over and it goes to full opacity, maybe there's a workaround, but I haven't been able to find it. So instead of doing an opacity shift when you hover over it, I chose to do a background shift uh, just like this. Once you've programmed the look of your UI, you then need to link each one of those buttons to a function. You can do a query selector to grab the class name or the, the ID name of your element, add a click listener, and then when you click on it, link it to a function you've defined. So it's really just about putting your UI together, making sure the design is all the way you want, and then for each of the icons or elements or images that you use, attach event listeners, whether you're hovering over them, clicking on them, pressing buttons, and use those to execute functions which are going to do things within Premiere itself. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you for the recommendation. And if you have any other recommendations or ideas for videos, make sure to leave those in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.